ओके लेट एस कंटिन्यू विद अवर लेक्चर ऑन फ्रॉन ऑफ आर डायफ्रैक्शन ड्यू टू सिंगल स्लिट बट बिफोर गोइंग फर्दर स्टूडेंट्स हैव आस्ट फ्यू क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग द फेज बिटवीन द टू कॉन्सिक्यूटिव वेव्स दे वर हैविंग दे वर हैविंग लिटिल क्वेश्चन ऑन दैट सो आई वुड क्विकली रिव्यू वॉट एवर वी हैव डन इन द लास्ट लेक्चर we all now have understood that the important difference between interference and diffraction is that we take into account the slit width and we will see that how our intensity modifies when we take slit width into account let us see that and we are t- uh, studying front of a diffraction due to single slit now in the last lecture i told you that let us take a slit width of e width and let us shine light of wavelength lambda on it then my rays a p and b p they would superimpose to give me a intensity pattern at p and the rays a p not and b p not will diffract by angle theta so the intensity will be modified here let us calculate that modified intensity now in order to find the intensity pattern we need to find the path difference between the two rays so let us take the path difference between ap not and bp not as bc by dropping a perpendicular from a onto bp not this path difference would be from the triangle a c b would be e sin theta and the total phase difference between these two waves would be 2 pi upon lambda into total path difference now according to hygin's principle i told you that this every point on the wave front can act as a source for the secondary wavelets so therefore the slit width ab can be imagined as a source for infinite secondary wavelets wavelets but for a simplicity of our calculation let us divide this slit ab into n equal parts please note down here we are taking n equal parts now if my total phase difference between a and b is 2 pi by lambda e sin theta then the phase difference between any two consecutive waves would be 1 by n into total phase difference that is 2 pi by lambda e sin theta and all the consecutive waves will have same phase difference because we have divided the total slit into equal parts let us denote this phase difference between two consecutive waves as phi taking n and 2 on the other side i get pi by lambda e sin theta is equal to n phi by let us call this as alpha just for the sake of denoting and we will be using in further calculation now i have i know the phase difference between two consecutive waves and i have n such waves at the end of the experiment we can see that n tends to infinity or n tends to very large than one what would by intensity pattern would look like which would be a real situation now for a meanwhile let us take n to be finite now what should be our goal in order to find the resultant intensity i need to find first the resultant amplitude of these n waves when the phase difference between two consecutive waves would be phi if i draw as a phasor diagram then what would it look like so these n waves i can draw like this 
and all another important point is that all the waves they are having same amplitude also so all the waves will have amplitude a and the two consecutive waves will has will have phase difference phi and i need to find the resultant of all these waves so what i can do i can consider these waves as vectors with so let us take this as vector the first wave as a the second wave i consider this as a vector and i can just parallelly displace it the tail of this vector if i put it here what do i get i will get the wave like this and the phase is phi again this is a now the second wave i can draw just parallelly displace this wave to the tip here then what would i get i will get the wave like this of a and again the phase between second and third wave would be phi and so on it keeps on going like this and then at the end i can join here and term this as r this r would be my resultant wave of all these wave who are having amplitude a and let us call this as theta prime because we have already used theta and phi so i am calling this as theta prime now how to find this resultant r this is my goal so my resultant amplitude would be r of these n waves with phase difference of phi between any two consecutive waves how do i do that let us understand so for in order to find the resultant vector for all these vectors i can what i can do i can just resolve each vector into the horizontal and the vertical component so for example what will be my horizontal component for r i will get as r cos theta prime this is my horizontal component and now on the right hand side would be the horizontal component of all the other vectors for the first vector the horizontal component is a plus for the second vector the horizontal component would be a cos phi now for the third vector the horizontal component would be what now you can just imagine this is coming here when i join it here what will be my this angle this is phi and this is phi so this angle would be 2 phi so the angle between two consecutive waves would be phi between the first and second then between second and third is again phi but between first and third it would be 2 phi so the horizontal component for the third vector would be a cos 2 phi and i would do it so on because i have total n vectors because i have divided my single slit into n equal parts so i would get n vectors i would be having here a cos n minus 1 phi let us mark this as equation number 1 now taking the vertical component what do i get for the resultant vector the vertical component would be r sin theta prime for the first vector the vertical component is 0 for the second component second vector the vertical component will be a sin phi plus a sin 2 phi and so on so i will get a into sin n minus 1 phi let us mark this as equation number 2 now our goal is to find the resultant r we'll use just we'll do some mathematical manipulations in order to find we r in theta prime what do i do what i will use some trigonometric relations first i will do i will multiply equation 1 and 2 by so these are all very old techniques which people have tried and they got 
2 sin phi by 2. Now you can ask that how do I get there? So this is just that people have tried few solutions and then they got an idea that if I do like this, then I will, it will be easy to solve. Now if I multiply equation 1 and 2 on both the sides by this factor 2 sin phi by 2, what do I get? I will get on the left hand side 2r cos theta prime sin phi by 2 this is equal to a into 2 sin phi by 2 plus 2 cos phi sin phi by 2 and so on at the end also 2 cos n minus 1 phi sin phi by 2. Now by using some trigonometric relations like 2 sin a cos 2 sin a cos b and then converting it into cos a plus b cos a plus cos b sorry sin a plus sin b you can get here a sin phi by 2 plus sin n minus 1 phi by 2. So these are very simple trigonometric relations which I am not doing here. So every 2 sin a cos b formula you can convert into sin a plus sin b and then finally few terms will cancel and you will get these two terms. Let us denote this equation as equation number 3. Similarly from this equation r sin theta prime the here here also I will multiply the same 2 sin phi by 2 I will get 2r sin theta prime sin phi by 2 2a sin and again we will use the formula sin c plus sin d so by using this formula I can combine this and I can get sin n phi by 2 cos n minus 1 phi by 2. From the second equation I will get 2r sin theta prime sin phi by 2 sorry here it is cos theta prime. This is equation number 1 and 2. 2a sin n phi by 2 sin n minus 1 phi by 2. So once again you see after multiplying by the factor sin 2 sin phi by 2 on both on left hand side and right hand side on the right hand side I will get like this in equation number 1 and 2. Then I will use the trigonometric relation 2 sin a cos b to convert into sin a plus sin b. Then the few terms will cancel and I will get two terms like this. Again I will use the trigonometric relation sin c plus sin d and then again it will be converted into 2 sin a n phi by 2 cos n minus 1 phi by 2. Similar steps you will do with the equation number 2 and then I will get this. Now from equation 4 and 5 2 is cancelled on both the sides what I will get are cos theta prime this is equal to a sin n phi by 2 divide by sin phi by 2 cos n minus 1 phi by 2 equation number 6 then from equation number 5 from 4 from 5 r sin theta prime is equal to a into sin n phi by 2 divide by sin phi by 2 into sin n minus 1 phi by 2. Now you can see here clearly this is cos n minus 1 phi by 2 this is sin n minus 1 by 2 and the here this is cos theta prime this is sin theta prime. So it is very obvious from these two equations what should I do in order to get r. So what I will do I will square and add these two equations 
in order to get r on both on left hand side cos square theta prime plus sin square theta prime will become 1 here cos square n minus 1 theta 5 by 2 plus sin square n minus 1 5 by 2 will become 1 and what is left with me is by squaring and adding by squaring and adding question number 6 and 7 6 and 7 we get r square is equal to a square sin square in 5 by 2 upon sin square 5 by 2 this is my important result which is the resultant of n vectors when where phi is the phase difference between two consecutive vectors and r is a sin n phi by 2 upon sin phi by 2 this is my resultant vector of n vectors each having with with phase difference of phi between consecutive vectors so this is a very important result which is used in lot of experiments you know to find the resultant intensity also and this is a general result which you get in order to find the resultant vector of n vectors where the consecutive phase difference between two vectors is phi so we will use this result in order to find the resultant intensity and then we will try to study how my intensity gets modified when we take into account the slit width let us continue in the next lecture thank you